wherever you may be, we wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, another film goer type thing you got in cinema, you know. I've cut them all out though, there's even Star Wars word competition, I completed that, that's how keen I will, aren't you know. I think that's Luke in again. Star Wars Collector's Edition, I've got that. Remember that, behind the scenes with Star Wars Weekly, remember that crap? Star Wars Weekly, God. There's a portrait of Daff. There's Luke in March 78. Only well, we got cover. There we go. I think that's the number one uh, corny dialogue line, isn't it? You've never heard it, Millennium Falcon? It's the ship that made the castle run in less than 12 parsecs. Right, okay. <laughs> Classy. Chew it. Uh, Master from Doctor Who. He's seen better days, I. So the tape's going now from 1970s, it's, but it's lasted pretty well. That's not Star Wars, that's Space 1999. Now I'm sure this were an American man, this. I don't know where I got it from, but again, you know, loads of stuff and articles and that. Yeah, and I just watched it, watched it again recently, Star Wars. Still a classic, you know, it's still got it for me, like, you know, no doubt about it. But have you ever noticed that scene where she speaks? Hell, oh, got my talking. I recognise your fail stains when I came on board, or also, you know. And I reckon that would have been the original conception, I think, for, for make Leah sound a, a, aristocratic and all that, you know, hey, have an upper single accent. But after that, he, Lucas must have said, ah, oh, sorry. And the uh, rest of the film, she just speaks in a normal type accent, you know. That's on Yavin, isn't it? The sta Death Star will be in sight in two seconds. Plenty of colour of illustrations. I we'll have to get that sellotape, I don't know how to rip that. It's like when you look at it though, you know, and it just brings back memories of the time. And you're thinking, yeah, that's that's what it will aren't. There's another illustrated type thing. I've got Cushing. There's the Grand Moff Tarkin. Should we evacuate in our moments of triumph? I think you overestimated their chances. He, he didn't though, did he? Oh, here we go. Really exciting bit of this next one with the poster. There. A map of the Death Star outer hull section from Star Wars Weekly. I mean, how, uh, how exciting is that? And when I originally saw that far, I'm going to make a model of that at Death Star and all that, and then I got bored, like, right, you know. But I look at it now and I think that. What a load of crap, they've just made it up, haven't they? You know. There's no way them are original drawings from Lucasfilm, I mean, I just don't believe it. But remember this one, Star Wars, now see the film at home, on 8mm. Because you can get a black and white silent, colour silent, colour sound, special, extra long colour sound version of 400 foot spool. Approximately 20 minutes of superb extravaganza at just £32.95, including postage and packing. Now, £32.95 in 1970, that would have about £500 now, so that's how dear it was. Were 30 quid for 20 minutes. I've got that somewhere on 8 mil. Leisure mail, bloody hell. I remember them adverts. Another behind the scenes of. And I've got my Star Wars glossy, glossary, that's from that uh, collector's edition mag, behind the scenes again. And then Star Wars Weekly started doing like colour uh, thingies in the middle. It's not a bad still, so there's Vader. There's another one. All familiar shots of course. 
getting to end now of course Star Wars brochure which uh, all fans Star Wars fans will be familiar with and all that you know plenty of stuff on it Star Wars collector's edition a bit worse for work but with a read loads of good stills in it that's falling dicks looking from October 82 this was the first time that Star Wars were on TV there you go is the four swivels alas you can see Star Wars the greatest adventure story ever on ITV this Sunday so I remember that and there's there's a section from looking on Return at Jedi I just predominantly collected on Star Wars you know but I've just I was looking through this remember this Hercut 100 in drama on the high seas, remember that? Fantastic day. And then some of the mail recently were, where are they now? About all stars of Star Wars, that was from 99, just before Phantom Menace were coming out. And then one final review from Phantom Menace, What a Waste of Space, by Sebastian Fox in uh, Mail on Sunday. And it says here, where does it say it? Uh, that's it. Here it says, it says, McGregor speaks in the strangest voice I've ever heard in a film since Tony Curtis's impression of Cary Grant in Some Like It Hot. And Liam Neeson, meanwhile, as the senior knight in Dutting His Apprentice is less likely, is less Skywalker than Sleepwalker. He speaks as though recently and unwillingly rose from an attempt on the Mogadon world record <laughs> and that's it Star Wars scrapbook <laughs> buzzing hope you enjoyed that trip down memory lane and uh, see you at the movies oh and I almost forgot may the force be with you